Mr. Amara here and I'm going to do a very quick tutorial to show you how to do the basics of Game Maker. I expect that most of you have this by now, but um, I figure it's worth having this resource up my sleeve. So as you can see, I'm saving it the project in the normal place, just as it's specified, and I'm calling this one Demonstration. So I'll click on um, Create. So here we go. Now the first thing I need to do is make some sprites. Now a sprite is like the clothing that an object wears, but a sprite is not an object, it's just a look for it. So I'm going to create a sprite, actually you know what, I might add an existing sprite. Now I have created a folder and I'm actually using some sprites, oh there you go, I beg your pardon. I am in fact creating a sprite, and I'm going to load a sprite, and these are some images from um, that my kids have drawn. And I took a photo of them on my phone, and here they are. So, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, this player. So, I am going to call this player underscore sprite, and you'll see um, why I'm not just calling it player in a minute. Uh, and here it is. So, okay. So, that's my player sprite. Yep, it does everything I want it to do. Uh, I think I could do with somebody to, let's have um, an endpoint. So I'm going to load another sprite, and let's make this guy get to his rocket. Uh, I might actually choose that rocket this time, and let's call it, that's our second sprite. That's it there, and we'll call that rocket sprite. So what I'm doing first of all is I'm setting up what some things look like. Uh, and now I'm going to load another one, and I'm going to have things to chase us, and let's have these squid guys chase us. Again, you can import any image, or you can make images in Edit Sprite here. But I just quite like the hand-drawn ones, and I've actually gone into Photoshop and made them transparent on the background, which is skills I would expect you to have. So, enemy, enemy underscore sprite, and it's okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some objects. So, my first one is my player object. Now, I click on Sprite and I tell it what it looks like. So it's going to look like the player Sprite, and it's going to be solid. And for now, I'm just going to close it up, and I'll come back to that. Now I'm going to make another object for my destination. And I'm going to call this object Finish, because this is how the game is going to finish. So, it's going to look like the rocket. It's going to be solid. And, actually, no, I'm going to leave that one blank too. And then I'm going to create an object for, let's say for my enemy, enemy underscore object or ob, will do. Uh, the sprite is the enemy sprite, um, solid, okay. And the last thing I'm going to do, actually I'm going to go back to my sprites and I'm going to create another sprite. And I'm going to load it up and actually what I want is something to be a barrier around the side. Hmm, I'm not doing anything that I particularly want, and that's annoying. Um, so I'm going to do without the barrier for now. Because this is just meant to be a quick tutorial. So now I need a room. I'm going to create a room. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'll come back to that. So here's what I do. I'm going to place an object. It says here, gives you a choice of what objects you can place. The first thing I'm going to place is the player. So... Our player can start here. Next thing I'm going to place is the finish. Oh, let's move it onto the screen, shall we? Um, and the next thing I'm going to play, put in is some enemies. I think have I got... No, no. Just... Oh, there you go. I've got four enemies. So that's fine. So I'm going to close that down. Now I'm going to go up to my backgrounds. I should have done this earlier. Create background. I'm going to load background. Now, again, these are just some images that I took on my phone, and I loaded up onto my computer, and I just quite like kind of real-worldy background, so I'm going to use the brick wall. There we go, and that's my background. Background zero. So, in fact, what I might do is just click on it and call it bricks, just because I think it's worth having things with kind of sensible names. You don't have to. If you can keep it all straight in your head, half your luck. So I go back to the room. Background. My background is the bricks, and there you go, that's basically what my level looks like. But so far I can't do anything. 
So I'm going to go to the player and I'm going to give him some events. So if I press the key left, he is going to move, and I grab this one here, he's going to move left at a speed of, let's say, in fact, let's say two. Let's make this a nice and slow game. Add another event, key press right, add event, no worries. So, right, speed of two, and as you can see, this is pretty easy. It's a little bit boring, but there you have it. Add event, up this time, and of course, as you would expect, we're moving up at a speed of two. And this is all a bit boring, but it is what it is. Uh, let's add an event, which is uh, down, of course, and we'll tell it to move him down at a speed of two. So there you go. So now we have movement. What I also want to do is have things that happen when I collide. So if I collide with the finish, then what we have is, let's see, we've got jumps, rooms, game, ah, game over. So there you go. As soon as I get to the rocket, the game is over. But if I have a collision with an enemy, then I want to go back to the start. So I look at here. Uh, here we go. This one here says jump, jump to start. So I will jump to start when I run into a bad guy. Now that's fine, except my bad guys are just sitting still at the moment. So what I'm going to do is say that every time I change direction, the bad guys will come for me. So as you see, press left. Not only will it make me move, but instead of applying to self, I'm going to apply it to the object of enemy, and I'm going to make them move towards me. Now, the way I do that is I put in, hang on, what do I call player object? Player underscore object dot x. So I'm basically telling it these are the coordinates of the player. So wherever the player is, that's what you move towards. So they will hone in, hone in on me. And I'm going to make it a bit unfair. I move at two. I'm going to make them move at three. Okay. And now I'm going to do that for everyone. So again, it's an object. It is an object of the enemy. Player underscore object dot x player underscore, oops, see, I typed that wrong, dot y, and it's going to move at three. Now, I better make sure that, in fact, my player really is. Yes, it's called player underscore ob. So it's zeroing in on me. So just two more of these to do. Now, a lot of this stuff is fairly dull when you're doing it. I will certainly admit that. But once you know what it is that you're under, what you're doing, it's not terribly hard. So X, and of course, as you can see, that's in the X box, which of course these days has quite a different meaning. And that is in the Y box. And let's move it three. So every time I move, I press any of these buttons, not only will it start me moving, but it will start them moving too. So. And I just realised that I probably could have cut and pasted player underscore ob so that I could have made this a bit quicker. Alright. Now, I close that by pressing OK. And you know what? I probably have a playable game here. Let's find out. So, I press on the play button up here, which is the green triangle. And it builds the game. It can take a little while to build sometimes. You've got a little compile button down the um, window down the bottom telling you what's going on. I think it's actually rescaling the background at the moment, and I think that can take a while, although there you go, it didn't actually take all that long. And here's the game. Uh, here we go, there's my enemies. And in fact, I have made an unplayable game, because they zero in on me really quickly, and I can't do anything to get out of their way because they go so quickly. That's interesting, that one there doesn't go towards me, which is curious, but anyhow. So, but I have a playable game. As you can see, I have my player, I have my destination, and I have my enemies, and they defeated me fairly quickly. So what I will do is I'll go back in and say, you know what, those enemies move too fast. Let's make them easier. One, So I'm going to bump down everyone's speed. 
and I should be easily able to outrun them now. There you go, I've edited everything they do, and now I'm going to run the game again. Let's see if I can win it this time. Of course, you don't want your game too easy to win, because that's no fun, but that first one I made, obviously, unbelievably hard to win. So there you go, there they are moving towards me. I reckon I still might lose this. But at least I'm luring them away from the start point. So there we go, I'm getting away from them because they're actually heading for my old position. Which is kind of the beauty of doing it this way. And there we go, and that's the end of the game. So I hope that's useful to you in making your game. Otherwise, come and see me.